How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to take a look at another new feature of 5.1, which is very useful if you're doing 3D animation inside of Unreal Engine, and that is called constraints. Now, there are several things about constraints. So what I'm gonna do is in this tutorial, we're gonna have this character come and pick up this robot, and it's gonna be in his hand. And when he's done looking at the robot and doing all sorts of things, then he'll just let go of the robot and that'll be it. So the fact that we have constraints, it makes this so much easier now because before you have to previously parent the, I would have parented this robot to this character and it was a whole mess. Now with constraints, it makes it so much easier because it makes it like if you're animated in Maya or in Blender or whatever other animation software you try. However, I know that a lot of people who watch my channel are not 3D artists. So I'm going to explain the constraints one by one, and we're gonna go through the very basics. And after that, we're gonna come back to the scene and we're gonna animate with the robots. There are going to be chapters uh, down below if you just wanna jump between one and the other. Just let's get started. All right, now in this scene, very simple. We're just going to use a couple primitives so I can show what I mean by all the constraints. And again, if you're a 3D artist, an animator, or you're familiar with this, then you can skip to the other chapter. But let's uh, explain this from scratch. Now let's get a cube and uh, something else like a, let's just get two cubes. Yeah, two cubes will do, be easier to demonstrate. Now let me assign some colors to them. I'm gonna have an orange one and a green one. And now let's go into the animation portion. So right out of the bat, you don't have any animation tools right here. And if you've seen the, the streams that uh, Epic did on the new animation tools, you see that they have some tools over here that I don't. And the way to get to those tools, and especially the panel on the right, that's usually where the constraints are, is over here. I don't know if this was here before, but I see it now. So we just go into animation mode. So you click here. You're going to get this new menu. You're also going to get an animation outliner and an animation details panel once you jump into this mode. So after this, uh, we just need to make a sequence. I'm just going to add a level sequence. I'm going to make it underneath the cinematics. Tutorial constraints. Our sequence here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add both of my characters, in this case, the different color cubes. And we're going to be looking at how to animate them. So this is your usual, your regular sequencer as it is. If we switch into the animation mode, nothing changes here, but you get these panels. And what we're going to do is we're going to try some constraints. Now, if you um, use this drop down menu as it is, you're not going to have anything because this drop down menu is for you to add constraints. So Think of it as an array. If you don't have anything in the array, nothing's gonna show up. Now for the constraints, what we need to do is, um, let's look at some of them. So here we have translation, rotation, scale. So these are your basic transformations. Instead of doing them all at the same time, uh, like when you have a parent-child relationship, all you have to do is use either translation, rotation, or scale, depending on what you want your other objects to be animated at. The other that you don't see usually here in Unreal is the look at. So let's demo the look at constraint first. I'm just gonna give this look at constraint. It gives you this eyedropper tool. And let's pick this green cube. And you can see it populated my constraints here. Now I have a look at constraint, which is this little eye looking at something. And what it does is it's going to make your objects by its pivot look at the other object that you selected with. So if I rotate this object, you can see that nothing happens. If I scale this object, also nothing happens. However, if I move this object, you can see that it's like this part of the cube is looking at this cube. So if I go here, if I move my cube this way, you can see that this thing rotates just like as if it was looking at it. So the look at constraint, I use it for control rigs when I was animating in Maya. 
there are other things that you could do with look at constraint, but just to show you uh, it's there and it's some, something that you may use in the future. All right. So that's that constraint. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to delete this constraint and delete this transformation. Let's look at another constraint. I'm going to go with translation. I'm going to pick the cube just like we did before. And again, if we rotate, nothing's going to happen. But if we move, it's going to move with us because it's just translation. Translation means it moves to another place. So you can see on the all the axes, it translates, but it doesn't rotate. All right. So let's look at another constraint. We have rotation. Uh, let me delete this transformation again, just so we can start everything from scratch. Let's look at rotation. Take the cube. Now, if I rotate the cube, this is a very particular um, constraint because, as you can see, it doesn't rotate from this cube's pivot as if it was uh, with the parent-child constraint. It rotates on its pivot. So if I rotate this way, it's going to rotate this. This is very useful for... Um, I used to do it for how it works video. So if you have a machine, you want to show how it works. It has a lot of rotating gears or something moving and rotating. This is super useful for that type of video. So you can see that if I rotate, it rotates on its pivot, but it's not affected. So if you had like two gears next to each other, this would be really useful as well. Maybe a helicopter or something like that. I don't know. All right. So let's look at another constraint. Get rid of this. Now we have the scale constraint. This is very self-explanatory. So if you scale, it scales up just like that. And it's going to scale from its pivot. That's very important. So if you scale something like this, it's going to scale from its pivot as well. Now, the, th the way that this would be useful is let's say you have something like this, like a cube and you make it not visible in sequencer. You can do that. And then you just scale this and you use it to make your other character or your other asset bigger. That'll be a function that I would use this for um, just by having it be so easy on sequencer now. Okay, now let's look at the last constraint, which is the parent constraint, which is the one that we're used to. However, because it's a constraint, we can turn it on and off. Now this, I'm going to introduce you to another property of the new constraints. We're going to go here in constraints. We're going to select parent, okay, click the skew. And now it behaves as a parent. We all know the parent child uh, that we've always been doing in real. This isn't anything out of the ordinary. You can see that the rotation here is much different than the rotation constraint. It's actually something completely different because it's rotating from the pivot of the parent, not from the pivot of its own. And um, let's just look at the other part of the why this is so important, because we could do uh, parent child constraints before, but this adds another level to it. So let me just bring back that constraint again. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate this. So let's do let's do some transformations here. OK, make sure our auto key is enabled. So I'm just going to transform, let's say this guy over here and let's go over here. Let's go down here and all the way over there. And then just go back to where we were before eh, somehow. Okay. Now if I do this animation, you can see that it goes all the way with it. Oh, we didn't do any rotation. Let me do some rotation here like that. Okay. So it rotates and let's make it come back to its original rotation. I'm holding alt, by the way, if you hold a key of alt, you can duplicate keys. So as you can see, it rotates that way and then it rotates back. But let's just start the rotation from here. So I'm just going to duplicate a key, add it here. So it starts rotating from this point on boom, and it comes back. All right. Now, once we are done with the constraint, what we can do is we can go back to over here to my cube and I can tell it uh, to add another key. And this will finish my constraint. So if I go here and then I 
animate this cube and move it around, you can see this thing is no longer moving with it. And if I rotate it, so this is very useful. You, I'm not gonna say you couldn't do this before, you actually could, but it was very cumbersome. It was not as easy as doing it right now. It used to be easier to do it in a DCC like Maya or Blender. Now it's super easy to do it in real. So if I click play, you can see the cube follows, rotates, and now this cube goes on its own because the constraint has been ended. So that's another particular thing about constraints here in Unreal Engine. Now that we have uh, a way to add the parent constraint separately from just parenting things in the outliner. All right. So this can be used for all sorts of things like lights. Uh, you don't have to use just static meshes. You can use scalable meshes. Uh, I'm going to use it for lights. I'm going to use it for cameras, all sorts of stuff. Now that we've done it here and I've explained what constraints are, let's do it in uh, an actual scene with a character that has an animation. All right, we're back in our initial map. And as you can see, I already made my sequence, I already have an animation in there. I even had an additive section where I fixed some bits of my animations. I'll explain that in another tutorial. But for now, we're just going to focus on the constraint part. So our character comes here, I press play. He just comes here and picks up the robot, or at least tries to, looks at the robot, then he picks it up and nothing happens because I don't have my constraints yet. So let's just do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our robot is also in our sequencer. I'm just going to drop my robot here. And we're going to start with the constraints. Now we need to jump into animation mode. So we can get those constraints. Usually you jump into this animation mode if your character has control right. So if you're using a metahuman and you throw the metahuman inside here, you probably just um, just get this right out of the bat. But because I'm not using control direct for any of these characters, then uh, I just need to go into animation mode. Just thought you guys should know that. And now when he goes down, like over at this point, I want the constraint to start. So probably I'm going to have to back up my robot a little bit. Maybe this way. Wait. And maybe world translation is a little bit better. There you go. Something like this. It's not going to be perfect because I just want to demonstrate. But from here, we can add a constraint. I'm going to click add constraint and I'm going to do a parent constraint. I'm going to click here and it gives me the eyedropper tool. And now you're going to see something different than the example that I did before, because if I click on my character, because my character is a skeletal mesh, it's going to give me this menu so I can choose which bone do I want my constraint to be. So I'm going to bind it to the hand and it's going to be the left hand, the one that's on this side. Okay, here we start our constraint. And now if I play the animation, you can see the robot comes up. Of course, it needs a little bit of fixing. And it rotates that way with him. I'm going to have to do some rotation, uh, some translation rotation here. But the important part is that now he picks up the robot. And if I just keep on scrolling, he can just play with the robot. He does something to the robot. And over here is the part where he kind of lets it go. Like that over here. And this is where we're going to end our constraint and our robot that's going to float away because it, it just been revived. So I'm going to click here to add another key to my constraint. And then when my character drops his hands, then the robots is already in there. Let's add some animation to this. Uh, so transformation. Let's go all the way over here. And let's transform it this way. So let's say it goes up this way, like this way, rotates and probably greets our character. Let's see how that looks. Okay. And it's it looks like that because it's not linear. So let's change this to linear. We can actually look at it in the graphic. 
let's see our drum mesh transforms and you can see that this constraint is pretty much a linear because it goes like from here 90 degrees and then 90 degrees is not um, smooth it out because it doesn't need to be smoothed out let's see the locations um i don't want these to be smooth i want them to be linear so linear it is linear and there's another one uh let's put it linear same with the rotation yeah the rotation is the offending one I'll make these linear as well let's see how that looks And when he lets go of the robot, it goes that way. Okay, a little bit slow, because it could be a lot closer. Like I could drag these animations a little bit closer this way. And that way, it's a little bit faster. But there you go. So my point is that with constraints, now you can do this. It used to be that this was very hard to do. This was very difficult. It takes several steps to do it here in Unreal. It was pretty much easier to just do this animation inside of Maya or Blender and just bring it over here and be done with it. But now you can see how easy it is to animate in Unreal Engine. All right, that is it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. My level two patrons are on screen now if you want to help out the channel you can click the join button or the thank you button it helps the channel a lot if not just leaving a like and leaving a comment for the youtube algorithm goes a long way uh you can follow me on twitter instagram for updates on the short film i promise it'll be done very very soon and um if not then there's the discord if you have any questions about this and i'll see you in the next video